Hi, this is Mark, and this is another episode of the ADD Show. It's been way too long since I did the last episode. I was working on an album, but I completed it. It is called Fantastic Lounge. It's a mix of EDM, hip hop, comedy, and it's on all the streaming platforms. But since that is over, back talking about some political issues, and there's nothing bigger right now than the war in Ukraine. And this is such a sad day because it is a major land grab, the first one in Europe since World War II. And what makes it so scary is that Republicans, conservatives, are now on the side of Putin. Now, as much as I disliked Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan was anti-Soviet Union, communism, Russia. It's so odd to me that the Republicans now are siding with an authoritarian leader, and at the same time going after China, which is also an authoritarian country, Yes, they're communists, but they're authoritarian. There's one leader for life. And they're allies. So China is backing Russia. So a lot of this stuff, we can't say it's totally um, because of Republican support, but you have the former president who we know was supported by Russia. I mean, this makes it so obvious, right? And all his handlers and all the people who were with him also were being backed by Russia. And why is that significant? Because in Russia, they use propaganda. They have state-run media, and they blast all this stuff throughout to try to get their people on their side. That's what propaganda disinformation does. Uh, even though Putin cracks down, he kills people, he's a thug, uh, he also knows that if there's mass uprising in the country, well, that's going to hinder his power. So, the other day, we have Donald Trump goes out and says, oh, what Putin did was a great thing. Now, this is before when he took two separatist uh, areas and then just said they're new countries and now he's going to control them. Well, when the bloated orange gives support, that gets shown throughout Russian TV. It also, that's what he needs. He's basically saying, Putin before this, that Ukraine is coming to attack, they're doing genocide, that they're a Nazi state. Meanwhile, the president, Zelensky, is Jewish. Definitely not Nazis, and there's no Nazis there in the Ukraine who are trying to attack Russia. So all that is is propaganda to drive old World War II rhetoric because the Soviets helped defeat the Nazis. So, so many people died in Russia. So this is just a way to ramp up everything. Now you have people like Tucker Carlson. He's like, what's wrong with Vladimir Putin? Did he ever kill anyone? Did he ever do this? Did he ever call me a name? Yeah, dude, he's a killer. He killed lots of people. And does he have to call you a name? No, he doesn't like you and he wants to dismantle this country. I mean, a lot of these conservatives don't understand like Putin wants authoritarian governments throughout that he can just deal with. He's one of the richest men, if not the richest person in the world. This is all about money and power. And this man has nuclear arms and this, this vast military. And I mentioned China before. Well, what happens is now China's looking at how the world's handling this and they wanna grab Taiwan and other areas around there. The difference between China and Russia is China makes stuff that people want and they make it cheaply. So in Russia, it's oil and gas is the predominant um, trade or export from them. In China, it's a whole different thing. So that's why a lot of the sanctions weren't full on Russia with the oil and gas because they don't want to drive up the gas prices. China will be a whole different thing. So why do I bring that up? Because Russia and China are linked. So if, if uh, Russia is cut off from the rest of the world, they're going to do business with China. Right? So China can then help them out. So that is the only problem with, with a lot of the sanctions. Now, Russia will be cut off from, 
from exporting oil and gas in Europe and another pipeline that was um, supposed to go through Germany stopped. So it's going to hurt. Um, in Russia, their, their stock market just went to the lowest amount. Their ruble hit the lowest amount ever. So we'll see if these sanctions are actually hurting the Russian people. Now, um, there's 40 million people that live in Ukraine. And if Putin takes Ukraine and tries to rebuild the Soviet Republic, now he's pushing, starting to push up against um, the more closer to the Western European countries, NATO countries. So if he does try to get into those countries, we're going to have a full war. Also, the Baltic countries are part of, of NATO, like Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia. We definitely don't want Putin. And there's two other countries, too, um, that are also Scandinavian countries who might also join NATO. So by going in and, and fighting, Putin is doing the opposite. He's strengthening NATO. So there's more support and more support for NATO and other countries might join NATO as well. Um, do we feel bad for the Ukrainians? A hundred percent. You know, they wanted to move on to a Western democracy. They had issues of corruption, but they wanted to break through that and realign with the West. They don't want to be part of Russia. So when Putin goes into Russia, he has 40 million people that he wants to control. It's they, we already saw what happened when they went to Afghanistan. So what happened when we went to Afghanistan and Ukraine is a lot more, it's a lot bigger, a lot more sophisticated. The people, you know, have a lot more stuff. So they're, they're, they're not going to fall in line and be part of Russia. Um, that happened in Crimea, but that was a poor country. Now you have a major city like Kiev and, and other areas that were more built up and people have those freedoms for years. So they're not want to give up. It's not going to be easy to control. I know he's going to go in and put a puppet regime, but the people in the country were going to rise up. So unfortunately, there's so many people who are going to be needlessly suffering. Who knows if they're going to go in and take citizens and put them into prison camps. I mean, this is where it gets really scary, the loss of life. Um, there might be 3 million, 5 million, I mean, who knows how many refugees and, and where are they going to go and what are they going to do and what's going to happen to a country that size. It's uh, very scary. It's very sad. And the unknown, we don't know what Putin's going to do next. Now, um, the other part of the equation is what I talked about earlier is how pathetic these Republicans are like I even call Josh Howie's office, Mr. Insurrectionist himself, who was talking about how, how great Putin was. You can't do that. You cannot do that. Maybe you don't like Joe Biden and those guys, but this is not the issue. The issue it means to be everyone has to come together and push back at the end of the day. Yes, we're going to have these differences, but it should be what's in the best interest of America and giving Putin these talking points are not in the best interests of America. And doing that undermines what we're doing as a, as a democratic country. So to me, it's so obvious who is getting money from Russia and what would happen in 24 if somehow Trump does win. You hear Mike Pompeo, oh, Putin was such a great guy. No, he's not a great guy. He's a scumbag. He's a scumbag killer. Okay, so clearly you guys are getting help and money from those guys. It's obvious. And if Trump was still in power, no matter what they say, he, do, he wants to dismantle NATO. He wouldn't try to help NATO. He would probably give support to Putin and allow him to go in there. You know, he'd probably come up with, oh, well, he told us he's not going to do anymore. You know, he told us, wasn't our, he, told us he wasn't going to move. Remember what he said about, oh, well, Putin said it wasn't him who hacked into all the democratic um, stuff in the 16 election. So what we need right now is we need a unified response. We can't have these Republicans trying to put themselves into power to discredit Biden, to say that, you know, America's weak and all this other stuff. No, we need a unified front and we need to help the people of Ukraine. And that's the end of the day, they're the ones suffering. Someone like Putin, He's got so much money and money spread throughout the world, he won't be affected. But the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, they're the ones who are going to be affected, you know, because they're not going to be able to get 
any materials. They're not going to be able to go about their lives. And it puts the rest of the European continent in a really, really bad place. And who knows what a, what is he, a 70 year old psychopathic killer dictator does with all this stuff. And now that he got his taste of a victory, will it push off? So, okay, I know this is a heavy topic, the first one back in a long while, but this is so important that we all come together and stand for the people of Ukraine, do whatever we can, if it's donations for food, helping refugees, it's a uh, very important and um, good strategic time that we have to, to stand up and make sure that um, Ukraine has support from as many people in the world as possible. All right, guys. Well, this is another episode of the ADD Show. Remember, get Fantastic Lounge. I am Mark Gordon. Thank you.